Hello everybody, glad you could make it. My name is Kaylee Allen and welcome to seven more plants that I think are kind of overhyped. And I say seven because I couldn't really find ten more. Well I could, but I didn't really want to dilute it down, so there was probably three more plants I could have found, but I didn't quite feel as strongly about them, so for that reason I haven't included them in this list and I've just gone with seven, but I don't think there's any rules here. This video is actually a part two video. I will link part one down below if you're interested and you haven't seen it because those are like the really, really overhyped plants and some of these are less so, but they still fit into it. So what I'm saying is if you haven't seen part one, feel free to watch it because you might be expecting to see plants in this video that I've already mentioned in the other one. So if you want to see that, the link is down below. I'm not going to waste anybody's time today. I'm going to get straight into where we left off last time. But before we start, a friendly disclaimer. This video is based 95% on my opinion and around about 5% on my personal experience. You may happen to love a plant I mentioned in this video as being overhyped. That's totally fine. It's okay to have a different opinion from me. There's really no need to be butthurt in any way or attack me or any of my viewers for the opinions expressed in this video. As usual, there is no hate directed to anyone in this video that happens to own any of the plants I mention. It's just my opinion. Hopefully that works this time. And for the rest of you, when I give my opinions on price, please note that it is so, so subjective. I know people that watch me all the time are so sick of hearing this, but when I give my opinion on price or my, uh, where I quote a price, it is so relevant to now. It's not necessarily relevant when you're watching this. If you are watching this in 2022 and COVID isn't a thing, then these prices might have come way down. They might have gone way up. Who even knows anymore? right? It's just, it's too much of an unknown. I am recording this video in January 2021 in the middle of COVID in UK after Brexit, so let that just be a little bit of a guide on price for you. With all that out of the way, let's just get into the video. The first plant on my new list that I think is pretty overhyped is none other than the philodendron pink princess. Now, on my first video, so many people said, why isn't the pink princess in here? Honestly, I think it just didn't make the cut, but it's made this cut because it 100% in my opinion is overhyped for reasons I'm now going to go into. Now, don't get me wrong, beautiful plant. Remember, I don't, I'm not bashing a plant because I think it's ugly necessarily. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. But in this case, I do think the pink princess is a beautiful plant. I think I first got my hands on a pink princess in 2019. And I believe back then the prices were in maybe a, a high double digit range. They were quite low compared to what they are now. And oh my God, how times have changed. Seriously. So really, I have three main issues with this plant. The first issue is, of course, the price. The price is now, it, it can be low to mid um, treble digits, depending on where you are in the world. I know they're a little bit more in the US than they are over here. But as much as I'm angry about the price, it's kind of a justified increase, that one. That hasn't gone from like insanely low to insanely high, in my opinion. Most of them I see are well within the bounds of a reasonable, like, COVID inflation. They haven't gone ridiculous. So for that reason, I'm not too mad at the price, but obviously I have to mention it because the price has gone up massively. My second issue with this plant, for me, it is cosmetic. It is the growth pattern. I just... <sighs> I mentioned this before in a different video when I mentioned the philodendron strawberry shake. It's got this really gnarly growth pattern. A lot of philodendrons have this growth pattern, don't get me wrong, but it just grows kind of nasty. If you don't give it more light than what a normal philodendron would want, then it goes really leggy and nasty and I don't like it. I don't like leggy things, okay? I just don't. I think it looks ugly. So that's kind of an issue for me, especially when you're spending this much money. Now you know you've got to put it in a brighter spot than maybe what you'd want to. So that's kind of something to consider. It's just, that's probably something that just pisses me off. But then again, this video is based on my opinion. So that pisses me off. The third issue, and I think this really ties into to my issue with it being overhyped at the minute, and that is the quality of variegation on offer, right? It is so, so tough to find plants like these pink princesses that have great quality variegation. So not necessarily a half moon leaf, but just a substantial amount of pink, right? It's so hard to find. The quality offered is so low. And that's not me bashing any seller, by the way. That's literally me bashing the plant because I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's just plants coming out of TC, but the variegation generally is really quite weak. I know a popular opinion on pink princess philodendron is that when they're cut, they revert a little bit. I've kind of had hit and miss experiences with this. Nine times out of 10, they do revert for a little while. But as a result, there are so many pink princesses out there being sold for high price tags. And most of them have little to no pink on them. If you're looking for like a really sexy one, like for example, the one I hold, was it a year ago, two years ago? 
my brain is like fried, but the one that I got from the International Air Ride Show that I still have, it's just kind of cut into pieces at the minute. I still have the mother that's much shorter, but that had really good variegation on it. The rest of them I see kind of don't and that pisses me off. I do have, or I did have some pink princesses out of tissue culture, but they're not great either. I'm not seeing great quality products. And for me, when you take the price point of low to mid three digits, and then you have not a lot of variegation to go with it, that's a bit shitty. I don't love that. I mean, it is what it is. It's supply and demand. It's what's out there. It's the price. It's the value of things, but it's just a shame. And even if the price came down, I don't think that fixes the issue. I think it's still a problem with quality of supply. There are really, really low amounts of, you know, pink princesses with good variegation. And that's a real shame for me. So that's a massive reason why it contributes to being overhyped, in my opinion. There's gonna have to be a new drinking game in this video. Just take a shot every time I say something is my opinion, because I have a feeling I'm gonna do it all the time. <laughs> The second plant that I think is very, very, very overhyped is the philodendron, Billetier variegata. There you go, everyone. Everyone that's commented on all my videos saying you're saying it wrong. I know, I've always called it Billetai. For anyone that didn't know, it is a Billetai. It's just not pronounced that way. It's actually pronounced Billetier. So that's what that is. Variegated Billetier, really quite overhyped. Now, I had my first variegated Billetier. Sorry if I slip back to Billetai at any point during this chat. I had my first one, I think it was a couple of years ago, and that was a lot of money. That was about five, six hundred pounds, I think it was, getting that in. Um, I think I sold it for like 650, so I didn't, I didn't really make anything on it. it. Just, you know, I sold it kind of for what I got it for, but it was so expensive. It was substantial. I might have had four or five leaves. And that was, that was an expensive plant back then. But now, now I hear the climate is somewhat different for this plant. If I've got my information right. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my god. From what I hear and from what I see on Facebook, the price of these plants is going by the leaf. And it is around about 1,000 a leaf. Let that sink in. 1,000 a leaf. That's quite pricey. And it's overhyped for me because obviously that, that's, that's, that's insanity price increase. That's not like reasonable inflation with COVID. That's just insane. And personally, for me, when I walked around Thai nurseries last year, I saw tons of these things. And I know I have one nursery tour where I, I showed you guys around one of the nurseries I went to. There was a lot there. That's just one nursery. Believe me, there are a lot of these sat in nurseries. Again, supply and demand. If there's demand, the price will go up and that's how it is. I'm not throwing any shade at all to any Thai sellers, but they have the stock. They just want the price for it. Totally fine. But for me, that increase considering the plant is technically available, it's just being held back, and I'm gonna be saying this a lot on this list, I think, or at least for one plant anyway, it just makes it super overhyped for me because I you know, I know the supplies there, I've seen it, I know it is. It's on most um, stock lists of supplies that I view, it's there all the time, it's just no one wants to pay that price. Um, get that coin, total respect for the trade and everything, but I cannot pay that price, and I cannot pay that price because I mentioned this in, was it last week's video? These things revert like nothing else, honestly, or at least in my experience, maybe I've just had really bad luck with variegated billetai, billetier, but for me, they just revert like no tomorrow. So for me, they're a very unsafe purchase. And given all these factors, for me, that makes this plant pretty overhyped. I would love to see it come down to I don't know, like six, six fifty, something like that for maybe two leaf cutting. Cause I think that's, that's quite reasonable. Or even, God forbid, even six fifty for a one leaf cutting with good variegation. I would love to say that, but it's just not really happening. Um, again, it is what it is. There's no point hating on prices and none of my videos are about that, by the way. I'm not happy with the prices, but I'm not one of these people to start hating on it. It just is what it is. It's supply and demand. It's the game we are in. So please don't get any of my words twisted here, but the price increase, the unstableness of the plant and the availability overhyped. Sorry, it's overhyped. I will get more in because I love the plant and I want one for myself, but I ain't paying that. I'm sorry, I'm just not paying that after my experience. No way. Okay, third plant on my list is not a plant I've owned. It's not a plant I've seen in real life. It's a plant I've seen 
not all over Facebook, so I'm acknowledging they are rare. They are. They really are. But I've seen it, and maybe this just comes from me not being into them or something like that. I don't know, but I view it as overhyped, and it probably, to be honest, it probably is because I'm not into this type of plant. But I can't pronounce it. But I have seen the Ficus Shiveriana. Shiv can't pronounce it, sorry. I've seen that all over Facebook. And if you don't know what it is, I haven't got a picture in front of me now. I have my laptop in front of me. But from what I remember... It's kind of like a ficus elastica crossed with an eelmanii. I say that because the variegation is all weird, right? It's a cool plant, don't get me wrong. How much are y'all paying for it? Seriously? Is this, is, is this okay? I don't know if this is okay. And honestly, I'm perfectly willing to admit this is totally down to my prejudice against ficus elastica, against rubber plants, just because I view them as being quite common. And I'm not, I'm not saying that in a snooty way. I'm just, this is a subject that I'm not familiar with. So I look at a price and I'm like, whoa, do you know what I mean? It's a bit alien to me. But I think really the, the thing that makes me think it's overhyped is because I've seen prices in the EU and I've seen prices in the US and they are different. Like, are you okay? America. It's an okay plant, but I have seen unrooted cuttings in the USA go for, I think it's, is it the mid three digit range? I've seen that happen. And I'm like, whoa, it ain't even rooted. I could be wrong. I don't think I've seen prices like that in the EU. I think I've seen low three digits, um, low, sorry, low treble digits. I don't think I've seen mid trebles. So that's just one of those classic examples. And that's why I talk about prices on my videos or lack thereof, because for example, EU, not very expensive. US, ridiculous. Do you know what I mean? It's that disparity that makes me think, okay, okay, maybe this plant is taking off in this country and it's not in another country. Like, is it availability or is it hype? These are the real questions, right? I'm not going to drone on about this one because honestly, I'm speaking 100% going to be honest with you. I'm speaking out of total ignorance, lack of knowledge, just an outsider looking in and my, I guess my previous perception on Ficus elastica. Uh, I do like Ficus elastica. I'm not bashing the plant in general, but it, that's a lot. That's a lot of money. It's weird that though, isn't it? Like I look at that and I think that's a lot of money, but then I look at another plant, like some sort of fancy aroid and I think, oh, good deal. So it's clearly in my own head, that one, totally acknowledging that, but that's my opinion on that anyway. I'm going to glaze over it because that one's totally on me. <laughs> but if you agree with me and you're into Ficus, let me know. Because I want to know if it is just me being me, really. This next plant, I, I don't know how people are going to feel about what I say about this. I really don't. But let's do it anyway, right? So the next plant on my list is none other than the Philodendron UPI. Yeah. Yeah. So you probably didn't expect me to take a swipe at this plant, but honestly, I'm kind of about to. So I don't think the, the parents of this plant have been confirmed, but I believe it to be, and I think a lot of people believe it to be, a hybrid of Philodendron bipenifolium and Philodendron pedatum, I think. If I've got that wrong, I'll write the right thing that it's supposed to be. It's an interesting plant, but I think, honestly, it is an acquired taste, no doubt. Full disclosure, I do own this plant. I own a really, really nice big one, and I own a couple of smaller ones. I think there's a smaller one on the wall, and then I have some small pops. And by pops, I mean the leaves are like this long. They're really, really small. So I do own a couple. And honestly, I've still yet to ascertain what I think about the plant. I like the plant, but I don't know if I can say that it's pretty. Who? Is someone on my roof? Can you believe this? My noise cancelling might have got rid of all this, but there's someone just walking around in my roof talking and I don't know whether to keep, just keep filming. I'm gonna ring Ben. Ben is downstairs. Let me just ring Ben. Hello, I'm, I'm literally filming right now, but there's someone on the roof. Feel free to come through. What uh, will they be doing hours? Right, well, should I just keep going and hope that noise cancelling can just carry me through? Right, okay, I'll keep going then. All right, bye. So there's gonna be some work done on the roof. Uh, ben forgot to tell me about it, so I didn't know about it and we're filming and I have two videos to film today. So if you hear noise on the roof, I'm sorry, I can do nothing about it. The show must go on. Where was I? Yeah, so great plan. I do own a couple. They are really, really good growers, but I can't honestly sit here and tell you whether or not I find them pretty. I don't know. 
I'm, I really am undecided. And I know I'm not the only one because when this plant was discovered in 1991 by a guy called, I think his name was Yup Moonen, he actually thought that the plant was insect ridden. So he thought the shape of those leaves was due to basically being eaten alive by insects. He didn't realize that that's how the thing grew. That should tell you enough of what you need to probably know about this plant. It is, as I always say, it is an acquired taste. Cool. So you probably think, why is it overhyped? Now, obviously, it's always been very rare. If you look in the background on this plant, it is rare. It really is. It's always been hard to get these things. You had to know a guy that knew a guy that knew a guy, and you didn't often see them come up for sale at all. I bought mine from a wonderful collector over in Florida. I think it... Uh, did he not tell me it was part of the plant that was actually originally collected from the wild? I might have that wrong, but I'm sure that's what I got told. But anyway... The price back then might have set you back mid trebles, I think, for a, for a small plant, a cutting or whatever. I think, as we're recording this video, that value has quadrupled. So I think now you can pay around about 2000 for a UPI. And that's not a big one like the one I have. It's, you know, maybe a one to two leaf cutting. It's a little bit nuts, if I'm honest with you. It's, it's gone crazy. Now, I think that is for an interesting reason, but I don't know if people are going to like why I think it's overhyped, but I'm going to tell you anyway. I respect the history of this plant, so I'm not sitting here bashing the plant as such, although it may appear that I am. I'm not. What I think is happening, and I'm saying this from my experience of seeing people on Facebook, what I think is happening with these plants, yes, the price has gone up. It's rare. Now people know about it thanks to people getting more connected on Facebook, sharing collections, even things like rare plant indexes, everything like that. It's becoming more known. From what I've seen on Facebook, I'm just going to put it out there, I have seen a ton of people basically wanting to own this plant because it is rare. So not because they like the plant or they do find the history fascinating or they respect it or anything like that. Most of the time, that's noisy. Oh, no, you don't. I see a lot of people on Facebook literally wanting to own it to tick a box for the clout, for the Instagram likes, for the flex, whatever you want to call it. And it just kind of grinds my gears a bit. Honestly, you do you. If you want to buy things and show them off and, and that's what plants are for you, that's fine. It's not really what I'm about. And people that really know me know this. You know, I've got a lot of plants that I own that I don't even think you guys still know that I have yet. Um, I just don't, I'm not a flexy kind of person. It doesn't interest me. I like things because of either history or how unique they are or there's just something special about them for me. So for that reason, I'm saying it's overhyped because I see people mainly wanting to own this for the clout, for the views, for the likes, whatever you want to call it, rather than wanting to own it because they genuinely would love to add it to their collection. And it's a little bit sad. That's my opinion on the plant. Yes, price increase, loads. I actually think this plant deserved a higher price than what it used to be anyway, to be honest, because of its rarity. I, I mean, 2000 is quite high, but I do think mid trebles was probably a little bit low originally anyway, given the, the history and the backstory on this plant. I'm sure there's some good information out there. I think I read a post on this a little while ago as well. I'll try and link that if I can. It, the link might not work. So if there's no link there, I am sorry. I don't think YouTube likes me linking to Facebook a lot. So... Okay, so I can't do an overhyped video without mentioning this plant. And the only reason this plant didn't make the cut into the first video is because is it's generally, or it was anyway, lower value. It's more commonly known. I didn't feel the need to say it was overhyped. But now I'm bringing it into the video because I have some stuff to say because... Let me, let me just get into it, shall I? The next plant on my list that I believe to be overhyped is none other than the Monstera albo variegata, or the variegated Monstera, or the Monstera borzigiana variegata, all of that. The variegated Monstera. Again, people that watch me are probably going to be a little bit surprised to see me say things about this plant, but I'm going to. I love this plant. There is no dispute on this for most people that like variegated Monstera. I don't know many people who don't like this plant. This is like, this is the daddy of variegated plants, in my opinion. Um, loads of people want this. It is in such high demand right now. It's so overhyped. I literally can't tell you how overhyped it is. I actually am not permitted to say how overhyped this plant is. I think I would bring everyone's world crashing down. So I'm not going to quite. I don't say what I've just said lightly. I'm being deadly serious when I say that the supply of this plant is so controlled, you would not believe me. 
I mean this. And there will be a handful of people that know what I'm talking about. And I, I literally mean a handful because this is not something that people know about. But the supply of this plant, I have to tell you, is plentiful. It is plentiful. I know. I have seen it with my own eyes. I've seen things that would just break this whole variegated Monstera community in two. The supply is plentiful. It is controlled very much so. And you know what? I understand why it is controlled. I am not sat here, if anyone happens to watch this that knows what I'm talking about, I'm not bashing anybody in control of this, right? Because people aren't going to like me saying this, but you know how it is on this channel. I'll just say something if it needs to be said. I'm not going to beat around the bush, okay? Supply is controlled because the demand is high and the prices are high. If you flood the market with something when you've got a lot of it, the price will come down. Nobody that supplies this particular plant wants that. So supply is controlled. It's not going to probably surprise a lot of you if I say that that happens a lot in the industry with other plants. I haven't necessarily seen it fully with every plant with my own eyes, but this plant I 100% have. I respect the need to control the supply. I understand it. I honestly do. It's just economics. It's how things work when it comes to this. I don't think, however, that the prices for these plants should be any higher than what they are now. I think we've hit a peak considering I know about the supply. I think this needs to be maximum. I don't think any more should be had from these plants given I know about the supply. I think now, honestly, it depends where you're around the world, but you're looking at low, low trebles, I would say, for a cutting of a variegated monstera. For a plant that's maybe a meter high, you're on about maybe, and that's with one vine in because it used to be sold with three vines. I know I have one, now they're sold with one. You're maybe looking at a one vine, a meter high, could be somewhere in my experience over in the EU side of things, could be 250, 300, somewhere around that arena. And this, this isn't research I've done recently. This is months ago, but that's what it was anyway. Maybe it's gone up. I don't know. These things just aren't on the market. Um, I know low quality variegates are on the market. That's something else entirely, to be honest. I'm just not willing to go there. But because this plan is under so tight a control, I don't know when the numbers will come down because the people at the supply are carefully controlling it. So I can't tell you that the prices are going to come down along with other pre, you know, post COVID plants. I don't know because this is a bit different. There is a lot of interference here. So I think it's overhyped, but it's because I've seen what I've seen. I know, I'm sorry, this is so cryptic. I genuinely do apologize for being so cryptic, but you need to trust me. Supply is plentiful. That's all I'm willing to say on camera. Um, so I hope that the prices don't increase anymore. I hope that this is, this is peak. And if they stay at this price, fine. But I don't expect to see them increasing at all. I would hope that they don't. Whew, and breathe. <laughs> Okay, next plant on my list is... It wasn't very known, this plant. I found this plant on a rare plant index. I found it on a rare plant index. I found it when I was making my first ever rare plant index on philodendron. No one really knew about it. I didn't know about it. It wasn't talked about it. It wasn't really seen. Now, I'll start by saying this plant is more common in America than what it is in the EU, UK. I, I definitely know that. But the plant I'm talking about is the philodendron Burley Marks fantasy. Really gorgeous plant. As I say, in America, it may have been Steve's Leaves that released a whole batch of these. I think he might have had a limit on it for like one per customer or whatever, but they're really good sizable specimens. Bit different to what you get in the EU. You get much smaller vines because these things seem to grow really slow. I have one myself. I have a vine about this long and I have some propagations, but they're not really growing to be honest, which is kind of insane. I bought mine Someone might remember it from a really old plant tour of mine, but it was about this big. It was a stem. It did have a leaf on, but the leaf dropped off in shipping. It was an unrooted cutting of a Burley Marks fantasy. And I think I paid around about, I might be way off, but I might have paid about 50 pounds for this. And that was, I can't tell you, 2019 at some point, probably. At some point, I don't know when this happened, but at some point they slammed onto Facebook and for the same thing, you would be talking about 450 to 500 for the same thing that I bought for 50. So I don't know how and when that happened. I believe it may have happened because they came out in America. Everyone was loving them and people in the EU like want that. Someone had them rightly charged more because it was, there was none there. Do you know what I mean? Um, I know people hate that. I'm sorry. It's just the game. It's just economics. It's how it is. So I, I feel like because I just, 
I just feel like they're overhyped a little bit. There's not loads of hype around this one, don't get me wrong. It is nowhere near like Variegated Monstera, Eel Money Eye, Variegated and Sony Eye. It's nothing on that. So yeah, EU cost loads. US, I don't think they cost as much. If you own one of these and you bought one in the US, please let me know kind of what size it was and how much it was because I'm really curious to see the difference because believe me, there is one. There really, really is. Are they just overhyped over here maybe? I don't know. I don't know. Right, okay. The last plant on my list is overhyped, but not for a reason that you may expect. And I will try my best to explain this. The last plant on my list today, because we only have seven and not ten, is the Philodendron Longa Lobatum slash Philodendron Golden Dragon Narrow. Now then, I've mentioned this maybe on my last video. I can't remember. I've mentioned it recently in a video about a little bit of confusion around these plants. But essentially, one of these plants is overhyped and one of them is not. The Longolobatum, not overhyped. Philodendron Golden Narrow Form, very overhyped. And I do sell these, if anyone's about to come at me in the comments, yeah, I do sell them. But I sell them as Philodendron Golden Narrow. Now, not everyone does. A lot of people sell these plants as Philodendron Longolobatum. Now, you might think, right, cool, great, Miss ID. Uh, yeah, but... Philodendron longolobatum will take you well into the late three-digit range or early four-digit range. A golden dragon narrow form, I believe, is the low trebles. Um, it's it's not as... They look similar, don't get me wrong. Uh, that's part of the problem. But it, it's not as desired as a longolobatum. They're like super rare. Now, again, with everything, I know that a lot of people are selling golden dragon narrows. If you do a search for philodendron longolobatum, you will find a shit ton of images that have juvenile ones. And nine times out of 10, that image is actually of a golden dragon narrow. Now, I'm not saying that these sellers are doing it deliberately. A lot of cases, plants can be mis-ID'd, and I'll tell you why, because it happened to me. If anyone remembers, way early on, last year now, because we're in 2021, I think it was after I came back from Thailand, I hauled a wonderful philodendron longilobatum. It wasn't. But that's what it was sold to me as. I later got it ID'd as a philodendron golden dragon narrow. So I'm not like shaming anybody or anything like that because I was a victim of the same thing. My supplier sold me that plant as philodendron longolobatum. It is not. So the fact that it's happened to me means it's probably happened to a lot of sellers. What I would say at this point is sellers, it is now your responsibility to go to find out the difference, I'm going to leave some some stuff below and I'm going to get into it in a second. So you can tell the difference between the two because it is now your responsibility to make sure that you try as hard as possible to get the right ID on the plant. But obviously this wouldn't be a very helpful video if I didn't very quickly gloss over the differences. So if you have one at home, you can probably check. So I'm looking at a couple of images now. I'm going to put them on the screen. So if you see me looking down, that's what I'm doing. But the first difference I would say between these two plants, between the Longolobatum and the Golden Dragon Narrow Form, is the extra floral nectaries. These basically look a little bit like spots on the plant. They're completely normal, so if any of your philodendron have them, that's nothing to worry about at all. But a real Longolobatum will have an abundance of these, and by abundance I mean tons of them. Especially when mature, especially on the catafil. The catafil, if you don't know, it's, I used to call it a growth spike, but you know, the, the, the pointy bit where a new leaf comes from, that's the caterpillar. The golden dragon narrow form does not have these. You will not see those little spots all over the plant. It's not impossible, but generally you're not going to see them, especially not on the caterpillar. Number two is a little bit harder to explain, but I'm going to give it a go. And I think I have diagrams for this. But on a longer low bottom, the posterior ribs, a portion of them are naked. So the, it's, it's so hard to explain this, but in layman's terms, there's no leaf above the vein on the plant for a certain amount of distance up the plant. I believe it's around about a quarter of the length of the lobe. There will be no leaf there. It's so hard to explain without an image in front of me because I don't have an image in front of me right now. I'll leave some information down below for you on that. I'll do my best to link that down below so you can tell. Sellers, please go and look at it. I'm telling you straight, if you've bought any of these things from Indonesia, you've got a wrong ID. I don't know where else you bought from. Um, other countries might be giving you a wrong ID, not necessarily deliberately, so let's not hate anybody, but you may have a wrong ID. It is in your best interest to get that checked out, because if you do have a real long low bottom, you're really going to want to make sure that people know it's a real one, right? So it goes both ways. So it's in your best interest to check that. If you own one, check it. Don't hate on anybody. 
Don't assume that anyone has done this deliberately. You can't go through life doing that, but just check what you have. Be aware of the difference if you want to buy a Longolo Bartum. Be aware that there is a Golden Dragon Narrow out there that when small, it really looks like it. And that concludes this list. This list took on a slightly different feel to the previous list. Don't get me wrong. Um, that's just due to the fact that there are different plants in here for very different reasons. Some are really controlled. Some are just rare in one place, rare, not rare in another. Some are just down to my personal opinion and I don't get it. Do you know what I mean? So this video is very different to the last one. That said, if you share my opinion, feel free to write below. If you don't share my opinion, feel free to write below. Just be respectful. And let me know if you have plants that I've now not covered still that you think are overhyped because th there's bound to be stuff that I've missed. There, of course there is because everyone has different opinions. There's so many rare plants out there. There's so many expensive plants out there right now. There's just so much room for this kind of stuff. So if you have any opinions or anything you'd like to add down below, then please feel free to do that. That is it for this video, guys. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you like it, feel free to leave a like down below. It lets me know that I'm doing a good job and I'm making content that you enjoy. If you haven't already subscribed, I would love to see you subscribe to my channel. Fun fact, 50% of people that watch my videos are actually not subscribed. So I don't know if you know this, but it does really, really help me out if you do subscribe to me. So if you'd like to do that, then please feel free to do that. If not, then I guess just keep doing what you're doing. And I will see you in next week's video, guys. Bye.